Hey guys, today I'm gonna to show you five tools that I use frequently as a student and maybe tell you why you should use them too. These are Connected Papers, Sight, Semantic Scholar, Dimensions AI, and Zotero. So let's get started. First, let's have a look at Connected Papers. Now I've spoken about Connected Papers before, but I think it is a really, really useful tool when you're looking for literature that is similar to what you've already found. And this can be really difficult when you're trying to do a literature review or writing an essay. So Connected Papers can really help you out there. So all you need to do is pop in a search term. So for this example and throughout, I'm going to use tuberculosis and pick a paper. So I'm going to choose this one. You can already, if you want, put a paper you've already found in here to build a graph, or you can select one from the list. And what it does is it builds a graph of similar papers that are uh, similar to the literature you've selected. It gives you the abstract and a nice list of these similar papers, and it gives you this graph which demonstrates how closely linked those papers are. It also gives you two very important pieces of uh, information. It gives you what the prior works of the papers were and the derivative works. So let's go through these quickly. Prior works are generally seminal, so that means that these papers are important and they've been highly cited in the field. So if we sort by number of citations, we can see some papers with over 2,000 citations here. So it might be worth having a look at these to get a real background on the, on the subject. However, it is also worth noting that these papers are quite old, so it is consider, you've got to consider when you're reading how relevant the things are you're looking at. But again, looking at seminal research can give you a really good foundation for whatever essay you're writing. But if we want to bring your um, essay and your literature into the modern day, we've got to look at derivative works. So der derivative works are what the paper has generally uh, been referenced in. So by that I mean these papers have come from the original paper. So again, if we look by number of citations or year, you can see there are some more recent papers on here. And this is really interesting to see what papers have been derived and how the research has followed through. So yeah, connected papers, very, very useful for literature discovery. Next, let's have a look at Cite. Now I've not been sponsored by Cite before. This is not a sponsored video, but I just like the program that much. And Cite makes it really, really easy to do critical analysis. So with Cite, it shows you what articles support your article and it shows you what articles contrast that article. And we can have a look and see a good example of this. So let's have a look at this paper here. It's another tuberculosis paper. And here we can see that there are some papers which contrast the ideas in this paper. And there are some papers that support this, this idea. So if we have a look at the contrasting ideas, it's good to have a look and see at what points they, they disagree on. And this means that when you're writing your, um, your essay, you could mention a point that was mentioned in this paper, but as a point of critical analysis, you could be like, these other authors did this other study and found this different thing. And then that gives you a point to generate some new, new ideas and be like, well, these authors did it this way and these authors did it that way. And you can make a educated judgment on which paper is a bit more relevant to your scenario. Conversely, you could also use supporting papers, and this is good if you really, really want to hit home a point. Um, here it's talking about a specific gene mutation, and you can say that one author found this and other authors also found this, and that kind of reinforces your point more. So, cite. Very good for reinforcing your ideas and your concept. Uh, you can also visualize these articles, and that's good for um, finding more connections and you can also add it to a dashboard where you can find new literature i won't be doing it with this one but go and have a play and see what you think next semantic scholar so semantic scholar is a really really good ai driven research tool and by that, by that i mean it uses some machine learning to help you find papers faster and gives you extra data on those papers so again i've searched up tuberculosis and you can see it's given me loads and loads of papers here and if we select the same paper that we did for connected papers, it can give you quite a lot of extra information on it. So we can get details on the abstract and we can see where it's been cited and which specific bits have been cited as well. So has the method section been cited or has it been cited in a results section? 
and it tells you what the highly influential citations are. So that means, has this paper been cited in a publication that is really, really important or really impactful? It breaks down the topics of this paper, so you can see at a glance whether it is something you should be reading. Uh, it gives you a list of everywhere it's been cited and you can sort this more thoroughly. It also gives you some really good related papers so you can have a look and see similar to connect papers if there's anything similar. Uh, what I also like is you can add it to a research feed. So a research feed, if we get rid of that one, basically allows you to look up really, really recent research on this. So I've added this and we can see some very, very recent papers written about this. So this is 2021, 2021, and it really helps you keep your work up to date. Of course, you've got to be careful with papers that haven't been peer reviewed yet. So it's important to consider this when reading. But again, it's a really, really easy way to find new ideas quite quickly and keep your work quite cutting edge. So let's have a look at another uh, literature discovery tool. As you might notice, a lot of these are for literature, literature discovery. And a lot of people just tend to use Google Scholar, which is fine. But when you are wanting to do more in-depth research and find links between things and really try and get those higher marks, it's nice to have a couple of tools that will help you and find those papers easier. So let's look at Dimensions AI. So it's similar to Connected Papers and Thematic Scholar. Dimensions AI can find loads and loads of papers. And I like it not for necessarily paper discovery, but if we head to analytical views, it can give you some more broad metadata on your papers so it gives you some research categories and you can tell which uh, widely cited um, categories that your research falls into it can give you a broad overview of how um, prevalent your literature is um, in publications so you can see here that over the last 10 or so 10 or, 10 or so years um, this paper has or not this paper but this field has grown in research interest and that could be really important or could be an important point for you to make in your um, essays it also gives you a list of common researchers and this is sorted by um, publications and i like to use this to find prolific authors and by that i mean authors that have written a lot on this subject matter so um, for example, this author here has had over 1,500 publications and a lot of citations, as well as all of these authors. So it'd be interesting to see how their work has progressed. You could, a point I've written about a couple of times in my essays, um, has inv often involved following a lab through their research progress, as you can often see multiple papers published on a similar theme. So you can kind of include that in your analysis and being like, this lab found this and later they found this and later they found this so it kind of adds to the flow of your essay and it makes it easier for you to then draw points of criticism or points of improvement and finally it gives you some source titles so this is just good for finding places where your articles are most likely to be published so for example the lancet has 64,000 publications um, under tuber tuberculosis so again it'd be really useful to have a look and see where your um, subject area is being published the most it's important to also look at how um, good those journals are so if you find a journal that isn't very reputable um, and that's near the top of the list it, that could be a point of criticism or that could be a point you make where you could mention that the research isn't uh, stringent enough for some of the more uh, more rigorous publications but again i'd be careful with straying into that territory but it is useful to know where your articles are published most often so dimensions ai really really useful finally zotero so zotero is a reference manager and i really like using this as it integrates very nicely with tools like google docs which is the tool i use to write and word and all you need to do is install the browser extension like I've got up here and you can click on the click on the browser extension and it automatically goes to your uh, library, which again is when you're reading um, loads and loads of papers. This comes in super handy.
You can set your own referencing style or use the referencing style of your um, institution. And it's free, which you know every student likes. Most of these tools have free versions or are just completely free to use. And that's kind of super important when it comes to students. Um, you can also import things quickly from um, not just academic sources, but also from books or from uh, news magazines as well, if your subject area covers that. So those are the five tools that I tend to use. I hope you found this useful. A sixth tool that is kind of a bonus one that I'm going to now plug is my website. I often get a lot of DMs asking me, can you cover this topic or that topic? And to that, I'm gonna say, if you head to my study hack library, you find a big list of all the topics that I've already covered and hopefully some advice. I've tried to order things under some headings so you can find things easier but it's a good way to search my video catalog a lot easier than just scrolling through the feed on TikTok. Uh, if there is anything that I haven't covered that you'd like me to cover in more detail, do either send me a DM on Instagram or find me on YouTube and just leave me a comment and I'll try and get a more detailed video out. But otherwise, that's it from me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it wasn't too rambly, but I prefer doing this off the cuffs kind of style because keeps things a little more personal but otherwise take care and i'll see you in the next video